Hello, my sweet friends. Welcome to DIY with Nadia and welcome to another Wreath Wednesday. Today we are making a Decomesh Love Valentine's Wreath using the bubble method and all supplies are from the Dollar Tree. Today's video is a collaboration with Artsy Cupcake. Her channel will be linked in the description box below. this wreath I'm going to be using a 14 inch metal wreath form and then I'm going to be using four rolls of this fuchsia pink and two rolls of this white deco mesh. Now it's time to attach the deco mesh to our wreath form but first I'm going to grab some pipe cleaners and cut those in half and I also like to kind of fold these in half so when I'm putting them on it's just easy to grab them and put them on. Then I am going to use a little uh, ruler mat here and this one's from the Dollar Tree. For a dollar this is an amazing deal and I use these for my bubble method wreath uh, because it's just so easy to measure. Let's go over the basics. The wreath has six sections. In each section we are going to make seven loops. Each loop is going to be eight inches long, exactly the length of this little mat. Now I'm going to unroll and layer my deco mesh. When I do this, I do make sure that it bubbles kind of down. So it's not kind of curling up, it's curling down. That way when you're making your bubbles, they're going to stay the way they should. And you kind of just set yourself up for, you know, a good wreath and an easy wreath to make. So I got pink. Next, I'm putting white on, and I just kind of roll it off the table. And then another pink on top. This is just going to be easy when I'm going to be separating them because I want the white to be in the middle. And then I'm going to go about an inch in here, or two, and gather. Going in between row two and three, I'm going to put my little tail down just like this, grabbing a zip tie because I just sleep better at night. Just to show you where I'm going to be attaching it, I'm going to be attaching it right there on the little intersection. So this is going to go down. As far as where we're going to be attaching our bubbles, you can either do row two, three, or two, three together. Um, it should hold just fine doing both of them, but I prefer doing either three or two. If you have a centerpiece that you're putting in your wreath and it's a little bit on the smaller side, go for row two. That way the wreath is going to bring it in just a little bit. If you have a big centerpiece like we have today, you might want to do row three. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And here we go. I just put my mat right underneath where I'm going to need to measure and just do your eight inches and bring it up and in. We're going to twist twice on top, go back to the back, twist it in the back, twice also, fold it in half, and half again, and then fold it back. As you bring it in, make sure you bubble it up. Grab your pipe cleaner. We're going to twist twice on top, and then bring our pipe cleaner to the back. We're going to twist twice in the back and then we're going to fold it either in half or in one fourth. These seem to be a little longer or something, so I keep on folding them twice. I'm done with my first section. I have seven loops in this section. I'm going to go ahead and make bubbles for these next two sections and I'll be right back. I'm about to make my last loop in my third section. So basically three rolls is enough for half of the wreath. And I just wanted to show you how much I have left here. The white one kind of came up short, but it's going to be a perfect to finish. 
There you go, the white is perfect to finish the wreath here. And of course, because this is my ending uh, little bubble, I'm going to use a zip tie. And I'm going to zip tie it to row three. To attach the second section, what I like to do is, since we have attached the ending of this section in row three, I'm going to go ahead and go in row two. And same thing, remember how we did the intersection? Same thing. And this is what the connection looks like. We have this section ending and connected in row three, this one beginning in row two right there. They're both on the intersections right here. And when we open this up, this is not going to be shown. It'll be hidden, but you know that it's nice and secured. Now I'm just going to continue making the same eight inch little bubbles or loops. I am on my last loop over here, grabbing eight inches. And this is how much tail I have left. Grabbing my little zip tie here. And I'm going to go between row two and three, but in that lower intersection, cause we started on right there on the third one. Now it's time to open up our little bubbles. And the way I recommend doing it is doing it from the bottom. Since I already layered how I want them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each bubble from inside out. So from the inside, I'm going to first take my pink one. And what I like to do is pull it down. This is going to prevent fraying as you're going along. Then I'm going to grab my white one, pull that one down. And then my outer pink is going to go towards the back. So my front one, middle is the white, and the top one is going to go towards the outside of the wreath. For the centerpiece, I'm going to be using the sign from the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I did was remove the twine where it was hanging. And what I did was I grabbed some lightweight spackling and I put some on top. And the trick with this is make sure you overfill it just a little bit because as speckling dries, it's going to shrink a little bit. So when it's going to dry, I'm going to sand it down and we're ready to paint it. Now that this is sanded, I'm going to grab my love sign. And this is a kit that Dollar Tree has. And I'm just going to pull out the little love sign and as you can guess it's going to go right here and this part I'm going to eventually uh, paint with this brilliant magenta just find a color that's closest to whatever mesh you're going to use but before I color it with this color I'm going to paint both pieces white and the reason I do this is this is going to be much brighter and it's going to take less coats if you give a nice white coat kind of like a primer to your sign. Before I paint my love sign, I'm just grabbing a dowel. You could also grab the back of a paintbrush. That's fine too. But I like to use a dowel because it's flat and my circles have more, more uh, chances of being uh, basically pretty equal throughout. So I'm just go going to grab some paint and we're going to make little dots. You can make little lines, whatever you want to do, but I'm going to make little polka dots because, well, I love polka dots. Even though my color matches the wreath really well, when it dries, it kind of is coming up a little bit on the redder side. So what I'm going to do for my uh, actual wording is I'm going to add a little bit of white to lighten it up and then we're going to paint. And of course I'm doing the sides of the wording too. To attach my sign to the wreath, I'm just going to be using some pipe cleaners. And as usual, I like to make a little flat surface to attach.
Now it's time to put my sign on my wreath. I'm going to put it approximately where I want it. Flip it over. And I always just kind of eye it. I don't really tie it really tight at first. Just going to like really lightly because you can always tighten it up later. So let's see how it looks. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit more. 